안녕하세요. 저는 레코드와 함께 이번 전시 25개의 방을 기획한 디자인 저널리스트 전은경이라고 합니다. 어, 오늘은 특별한 부분, 어, 환경의 레코드 파운더이신 호롱 전문님과 또 어, 리드베이 에델코르트 트렌드 유니온 대표님 모시고 패션의 어, 사회적인 가치에 대한 얘기를 나눠보는 시간을 갖기로 하겠습니다. 그러면 먼저 두 분을 간단하게 우리 한경일 전문님부터 소개를 좀 어떤 일을 하시는지 소개를 좀 부탁드리겠습니다. 아, 저는 10년 전에 네. 어, 토롱 FNC에 제보를 하고 네. 브랜드를 네. 만든 레코드라는 브랜드를 만든 파운더이기도 합니다. 그리고 그 당시에는 브랜드라는 거가 이렇게까지 만들어질지에 대한 생각은 하지 못했어요. 하지만 저는 오늘 17년 전시를 이렇게 할수 있는 기회를 가졌고 또 레코드의 파운더이자 지금은 코롱 FNC의 CSO 칩 서스테이블리티 오피셜라는 직함을 갖고 있습니다. 조금 생소한 직함이긴 하지만 어, 저는 코롱 스포츠 그리고 에피그램 그 다음에 레코드라는 세 개의 브랜드를 어, 환경적으로 또는 사회적 리스폰스빌리티에 대한 생각을 갖고 브랜드를 만들어 가고 있습니다. 네, 트렌드 유니온이 어떤 곳인지 그리고 어떤 일을 해오셨는지 간단하게 좀 말씀 부탁드리겠습니다. Oh yeah, well. Um, it's part of my life, but my life is very uh, complex, like a big sandwich. So my, my major work is uh, forecasting the future. So I've been doing this since I was 21 and now I'm 72, so that's half a century of forecasting. <laughs> so I have a long record and uh, since I use my intuition 100%, I'm almost always right, because intuition is very strong. And so this is what made me uh, do this company Trend Union with friends. We came together to collaborate and to make uh, several trend books on color and textile and general trends and design and you know whatever comes to mind. And uh, I'm still making these books, some of them. Um, because I love it as a, the starting point of everything I do in my life. So it's like the platform. And then I do education, I do publishing, writing, uh, <coughs> activism, uh, what else? Uh, uh, exhibitions, uh, talks, um, yeah. Day. 아까 두 분이 먼저 얘기하는 걸 들었는데 전부터 안면이 있으시더라고요. 그래서 언제 처음 서로를 알게 되셨는지. We met in um, anti fashion manifesto in uh, the south of France, in Marseille, where um, uh, Record was present with a very beautiful presentation, and she did a talk. To the audience, I think you came twice. Twice, yeah. And so uh, there was also the shop, and there was the remake, uh, uh, re recreation, re re and um, there was also the beautiful wrapping, and there was the beautiful uh, thing you get with the garments to to restore, and it was amazing because. Uh, there's a lot of people doing some form of recycling, but as far as I know, this is the only brand today which is doing, you know, A to Z, you know, 100%. You know, this is it. You know, the house is recycling. And that every detail was taken care of was so great and such a good example for the audience and the journalists because we had not seen something like this before. So I guess we became friends uh, overnight because uh, we are like sisters in the same spirit. I was a young designer at the time. I was in the Premium Vision Trend Union. 
처음 됐었고 그때 저한테는 너무나 멋있는 나의 멘토 같은 분이셨습니다. 그리고 어, 말, 그러니까 마스터에서 뵀을 때 저는 굉장히 감동을 받았고 어, 저한테는 닿을 수 없는 분이셨던 것 같은데 제가 이런 일을 업사이클링을 하면서 이렇게 기회 만날 수 있는 기회가 주어져서 어, 저한테는 굉장히 소중한 만남, 만남으로 기억하고 있습니다. 그럼 아까 오셔서 전시를 한번 둘러보셨는데 어떠셨는지 좀 소감이 궁금합니다. I think it's a very beautiful uh, exploration of 10 years. Um, it's very, it's like going to Milan actually. It's like a real um, Uh, how can I say? Itinerary where you encounter different aspects, so it's very well done. Sometimes very emotional. Um, like in the Hongbok, I, re I really think it's very emotional. And I think uh, in case of the Lacoste, it's um, much humor. <laughs> and uh, In many cases, you know, there is something very, very strong, which speaks very strong to us. So it's a very well um, curated exhibition. Because 10 years is not easy. There's so many things to say, and I think you managed uh, together to do this very well. And as I also consider it a, very, a real celebration, because we see the creativity built up and you know get stronger even and. And of course, it's not telling everything because there's many more beautiful ideas, like the cafe and you know, people eating traditional food, and you know, there's so many more things. But it's um, it's a very good um, overview. I hope you are recording everything because it's important for people to know. And actually, this should be somewhere else, also in another country. Because this learning curve, you know, for other brands. Um, and what I find personally very um, attractive in the in the product is that it is upcycling and it's made from different components. But in itself, it's also a very beautiful design. So the design component, as we see, you know, is very very strong. Uh, on the same level as the great Japanese designers, if I may give this example, sorry to speak about Japan, <laughs> but you know they are great uh, people, as you know, and so it it has I think the fact that it, it's not just recycling. Many brands do recycling, so one other sleeve, you know, in another, so it's easy. But this is. Uh, what we call in the Netherlands, form giving. It's a beautiful word instead of design, form giving, because it's the gift of design, the gift of form. And this is what I see in this collection, is that each piece has a very strong um, design handwriting. And I think that is the genius. That's the genius. So there is the conceptualization and but also the design. 멋지게 요약을 잘 해주신 것 같다는 생각이 들었어요. 근데 저는 이제 말씀드리면서 할 말이 많은데 그 말을 다 하지 않으면서 충분히 표현을 한것 같다. 이런 말 너무 좋았어요. 어, 이 그러면 우리 한경의 전문님께 여쭤보고 싶은데요. 이 전시를 기획하게 된 배경, 물론 이제 10주년 기념 전시라는 것이 기반이 되기는 했는데 사실 말씀하신 대로 레코드 그냥 10년을 회고하는 아카이브 전으로도 할수 있었는데 이제 뜻을 함께하는 크리에이터들을 모아서 이렇게 기획 단독 전시가 아니라 다, 어, 이런 전체 기획 전으로 하시게 된 이유 같은 게 좋은 건가요? 네, 아까 그 얘기도 하셨는데 저희도 고민을 많이 했어요. 10년의 아카이브. 어, 너무 많은 이야기들이 있어요. 음, 저는 오늘도 전시 설명을 드리면서 더 얘기하고 싶은 것들을 느꼈거든요. 근데 여기는 제가 저희 레코드의 팀원들과 고민했던 거는 이게 우리가 
10년을 사람들한테 알리는 거가 너무 힘들었고 그리고 그 환경에 대해서 또는 사회적 책임감에 대해서 하고자 하는 것들이 혼자로서 너무 힘들었던 시간 그 시간들을 이제는 10년이라는 기간이 힘을 가질 수 있다고 생각했어요. 그리고 우리랑 같이 했던 프렌즈들을 기억하게 됐어요. 그래서 이제는 하지만 어쨌든 코비드라는 상황이라든지 요즘에 특히 느껴지는 기후환경의 이런 부분들이 어 우리가 10년 전에 또는 5년 전에 우리가 얘기했었던 것보다 지금은 이제는 혼자가 아니라는 생각이 더욱더 들었어요. 그래서 우리 이제는 이러한 우리가 주장하고자 하는 얘기를 함께 더 목소리를 내면 좋지 않을까? 그 함께 우리가 같이 10년을 해왔던 사람들 또는 미래에 같이 가져갈 사람들 그들과 같이 전시를 하고 싶었어요. 그중에 가장 저희의 문제점은 어, 우리 이야기들 중에서 어떤 것들을 빼지? <웃음> 하는 거였고요. 한 3분의 2는 저희는 못 보여줬어요. 하지만, 하지만 저희는 후회하지 않고 어, 프렌즈들과 같이 할수 있고 그런 부분을 알아주신 선생님께 너무 감사하다는 생각도 하고 있어요. 혹시 전시를 그렇죠. 보시면서 이렇게 레코드와 함께 하면 좋을 것 같은 추천하고 싶은 프렌즈나 뭐 크리에이터 브랜드들이 있으셨는지 좀 궁금합니다. Oh, for sure. I could um, come up with names not straight away now because now I have to think. But I can definitely put you in touch with people I think are on the same page or who could somehow connect in a new way. Um, there is now many people aware, as you say. So the, the field is getting better and, and bigger. But it needs to be some people very, very creative. So I have to think. <laughs> And uh, especially, I think it would be important to see if there is events where you could participate to get the message out more strongly, not just in Asia, but also in other parts of the world. Because I see the brand uh, as a school, and it's a school of, of, of uh, learning how to deal with these issues. How to be rigorous, how to go until the end, how to not let go, you know, how to be like a terrier once this I need to do this and so so it needs set of uh, character you know, to continue against all odds, you know, it's not so commercial, people don't know, it's a, it's a struggle. Everybody says, ha ha ha, it's not going to happen. And then it's going to happen, and it's going to happen more, and then it's going to become part of, you know, our industry. So, yeah, it's uh, it's um, it's a fight. Also, actually, um, I'm thinking <laughs> already. Um, I'm starting. I I just started a new thing in, um, in Florence in. in uh, Italy, and it's a, a new master for textile and fashion called Farm. Plus, fabric is fashion, and so it starts from the farm with the fiber, with the seed, with you know the linen, the better cotton, and the wool, you know, from our local wool, and so on. And so we only have six students, but this is the start. But I, I want uh, I want her to come maybe to um, after Milan maybe come and see us and talk to the students inspire the students because it's you know very important that we have uh, this strength you know, she has this strength so this needs to be broadcast you know, because it uh, not many people know how to do this and she's the expert but. World expert, expert, and so yeah, that's a, that's a thing we need to do to make uh, to make her world famous. <laughs> 두분 얘기를 들어보니까 안티패션 포럼에서 처음 만나셨다고 그랬는데 
리데베이 에델 코렉스 대표님은 안티패션 메뉴 매니페스토 주창하신 걸로 잘 알려졌습니다. 근데 이게 어떤 운동인지 어떻게 진행되고 있는지 좀 설명을 부탁드리겠습니다. I think I, I published the manifesto 11 years ago. So I've been writing I think 12 years ago. And uh, it was very difficult because um, I had to write, I had to write because I could not continue my work and not being honest you know, about how terrible the situation is, how terrible. So I had to write, but then you're writing about your own friends and people and students and life. And you have to say, it's no good, it's terrible. And so I had to take a lot of time to properly write it. And I had to ask my company, my people, I said, maybe we will lose all our clients. <laughs> And uh, so what do we do? Should we publish? They said, yes, we publish. So they gave me okay. And so it was very, very powerful and successful. And still people are reading it, still people are asking for it. It's still relevant almost every day more. Because now what I said 11 years ago, the journalists are saying now, you know, New York, you don't have to go to New York Textile uh, Fashion Week. because there is no 15 minutes of no news. That's what they said. And they said Milan, uh, brands are hiring new hot young designers, but they don't give them any space to make new designs, so not interesting. Then they go to Paris, they say Paris Fashion Week, this one is copying this one, 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 this one is copying this one. So they say, you know, all of them say, it's end of story. End of story. Marketing has been, you know, completely killing, killing fashion. And that's why everything is the same. Everything is boring. You know, every, everything you can buy, you already have in your cupboard, maybe one, two, three, so. We are we're running into the wall, you know, it's, 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 it's the end, we need to change. It's not just for the environment, it's also for the emotional well-being of people. Um, the clothes are not helping us anymore, you know. Clothes should help us to be and, you know, to express ourselves. And if I'm sad, the, the garment needs to keep me. And if I'm happy, the garment needs to be happy for me. And all this language is gone. And we buy many, many things, and then we come home, and then we're not even happy. We're not even happy. We don't even open the box. So all the value is gone. And this is the moment where we have to say, no, now we have to start. Now we have to rethink. Now It's time to make better things, to make better materials, to make slow processes, to work specifically for people, to do couture or half couture or homemade, ask people to make themselves. So there's many recipes, as we know. So in fact, anti-fashion becomes every day more important as a testimony, unfortunately. Uh, because people are still not learning and uh, the rich 1% think that they can continue to you know, shuffle the shit into us you know? that's what happened and uh, it needs to stop so we need to have more activism we need to have more awareness, more education more examples Because more and more people do understand that this is no longer, you know, it's, we have been killing the culture, God, completely killed, by greed and speed.
레코드는 10년 전에 론칭을 해, 했으니까 한 안티 패션 매니페스토를 발표한 지한 1, 2년 정도 지난 뒤에 이제 시작을 하셨어요. 시기적으로 되게 좀 비슷하게 느껴지는데 그즈음 전문님은 무슨 생각을 하고 계셨나요? 어, 저는 회사가 그 당시에 이제 제거에 대한 부분 이걸 갖고 뭔가를 할수 있지 않을까에 대한 숙제를 주셨어요. 그래서 그리고 이거를 그 당시에 뭐 홍대나 이런 데 리사이클하는 친구들은 몇 명들이 있었고 그 친구들과 만나면서 이 프로젝트를 맨 처음에 프로젝트로 진행을 했었어요. 근데 제가 우연히 그냥 생각을 하게 됐어요. 내가 어, 디자인으로 시작해서 오랫동안 <웃음> 이 일을 해왔고 이제 나한테 디자인으로서 굉장히 내가 할수 있는 길을 내가 얻은 것 같다? 음, 여기에 우리 주제간에 그런 얘기가 있어요. <웃음> 디자인을 많이 한 채. 네. 어, 그래서 아, 나는 이제 새로운 일을 생각해 봐야 되겠다. 음, 그게 어떤 사람들은 많은 옷을 디자인하고 많은 사람들한테 입히긴 하지만 그거에 대한 다른 생각을 해보자. 음, 10년 전에 저는 그 생각을 한것 같아요. 음, 그리고 제가 이 생각이 너무 어려운 시간들을 가고 있을 때 마스에 의해서 어, 만나게 됐고 힘을 받게 됐죠. 그게 저한테는 굉장한 힘든 상황에서 저에게 어떤 음, 큰 도움이었죠. 제가 한마디만 더 하면 그런 것 같아요. 제가 이 레코드라는 브랜드를 하면서 저는 얘기할 수 있어요. 어떤 보통의 디자이너들이 내가 만든 옷이 어떻게 되어질까? 당연히 그냥 행복하게 생각하겠죠. 분명히 주인을 만났을 거야. 근데 저는 주인을 만나지 못한 옷을 소각되기 직전에 옷들을 너무 많이 봐왔어요. 그리고 이 옷들은 왜 팔리지 못했을까? 그거에 대한 질문들을 제 스스로 했고 그게 제 인생에서 월코드라는 브랜드를 10년간 끌고 갈수 있게끔 하는 굉장한 시각의 변화였어요. 그리고 그리고 나서 저는 디자이너들한테 얘기했어요. 너희들은 죄인이다. 어? 어. 왜냐면 그 옷들을 버리게 만든 음, 책임의 의식 같은 거가 없는. 그래서 그 그러니까 저는 지금도 뭐 저는 레코드도 하지만 다른 브랜드들도 해요. 그래서 그 옷들이 최대한 많은 사람들한테 팔릴 수 있도록. 버려지지 않게끔 하는 시각에 대한 변화도 저 스스로 이 과정 중에 있었습니다. 그럼 이제 좀 지속 가능성에 관련된 이슈에 대해서 좀 얘기를 들어보고 싶은데요. 어, 지속 가능성이나 에코, 친환경 같은 가치들은 사실은 트렌드가 되면 안 되는 것들이거든요. 그런데도 여전히 이 단어들이 표현을 바꿔가면서 어떤 마케팅 테마가 되기도 하고 트렌드라는 말을 우리가 이, 이 단어 뒤에 붙이기도 하는 상황이 되었어요. 근데 이런 일들은 근본적으로 왜 일어나는지 오랫동안 이 패션 산업을 지켜본 분으로서 얘기를 듣고 싶습니다. It became a, a marketing tool because it's getting successful. When it was not yet successful, you know, it was more pure. And now you have a lot of companies who pretend. Or, which is also good, many companies are trying, trying very much. And I always want to include these companies because you cannot change your life you know, from one day to another. So we need companies to give the benefit of the doubt that they are going to do it. But it, the process is slow and we need to speed up. And I think one of the The best recipes is to uh, produce less. Produce less, 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 less. And maybe because of the current political climate, uh, you know, economic climate, uh, maybe it will happen for us, <laughs> unfortunately, because we will have um, maybe civil war in America, two very big uh, problems in Asia, war in Europe, Uh, economic uh, downfall, 
you know, no heat, uh, crazy. So it feels almost like war, 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 you know, it's like a situation just like Second World War or something. So maybe a lot of things will happen also because of this shock moment. And um, I don't want any war or any, but um, it's important that there is, you know, there's silver lining in the problems because the problems with Russia make us independent and make um, solar energy and wind energy more important. So it will go more fast. So it's, it's bizarre that everything bad is also maybe good, you know, for, in, in the end, for the environment. Uh, but also because of the problems, we don't think enough about the global warming. And uh, it, in Europe, this weekend, it was 29 degrees. 29, it's like high summer. You know, in Paris, in Amsterdam, everywhere. So, it's very nice, like, you know, Indian summer. But it's scary, because it's, it's too warm. So, people are scared. I think the general public is much more aware, much more aware. But they don't know how to do, you know, how to start. And so we need to reach the little ones, the little kids, I think, and uh, tell them, you know, teach them, and give them love for the beauty of things so they can keep. If you can tell stories of the clothes, and, but if we don't put love in the clothes, we don't need to keep. You know? So I have them one day and then gone. It's only when we again can put love. That's why I put the heart. We put love in the in the product. You know, then it's like animism. The product becomes, you know, himself like a being. So there's energy in the product because the designer and the team, they have pushed the energy. And so this product can sell itself. I can say, buy me, because I'm so beautiful, because I'm, you know, I'm a being. And this is, I think, the animistic behavior to, to really have respect, you know, to have respect for the yarn for the field, for the yarn, for for the cotton, for the linen, for the you know, for the making, for the production, for the embellishing, for all the steps, you know, they are very important steps. So if we, we can understand how many steps, then maybe we have more respect also. And um, then more joy. Because in the end people will have more joy. And that's, we forget that message, that you know, the joy is uh, in not having too much. <laughs> yeah, it's actually good. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. It's the most difficult question. Um, I don't believe that we can live without abundance. I, I believe that sometimes I can be very minimal, but then I want to have a mirror or a shine or lace or shoes or <laughs> sexy or something. So uh, from the beginning of time, humans want to have beauty and want to have ex you know, expression and, and sometimes abundance of you know, gold. And the first pair of pants from Paleontic time, they found it has already woven you know, woven uh, ribbons. So there's already need for fantasy, need for fantasy. 
So I don't believe that we will live um, a minimal sort of it's not a Protestant movement, it's not a church, it's not a religion. We don't have to suffer. Huh? And uh, it, it is more bringing things in a normal realm and in a normal, normal perspective that you have you know, beautiful, basic things you keep for a long time and then oh, you buy a crazy coat. Huh? Because you need to buy the crazy coat, you know. Your heart wants, I need this abundance of this fabric or, and then I need also crazy shoes and then again I will have just a basic sweater. So it's, I once made a trend book called Sustainable Style in one of the old uh, period of uh, recession. And I called it style because I think it's very important to have style and not just be sustainable. And this is what we call is it like st super style. So it's sustainable style. And then I realized that work clothes are very sustainable, but also crazy exclusive clothes, you know, in fantastic fabrics, are also sustainable because you can buy and then wear this item for 25, 30 years. Not every day, just sometimes here, sometimes there. Maybe one year not, then you go back. But it's your friend, you know, it's your, it's your friend. So, yeah, the answer is we will still have abundance, but personal abundance. And we should not have um, industrial abundance. Industry needs to be regulated, I think, on price and on behavior. And um, if we have a beautiful balance, then we can be as crazy as we want and as creative as we want. So the two things are, are, need to be separated. 뭐 요즘 주목하고 있는 이슈 같은 것들 있으면 마지막으로 하나 말씀해 주세요. I've been working on a book on gender fluidity, which is very interesting, very interesting because there is so many different aspects, and actually the people who consider themselves neutral are more and more and more and more. So this. You know, this growing awareness about people, you know, beings being neutral and very neutral, uh, a little bit neutral, uh, deeply neutral, uh, severely neutral. There's all the different aspects, but it's the group of neutral is very, very big. And society doesn't understand that, I think, Many more people are neutral, many, many, many more, uh, without um, even understanding that they have another gender. But because of their life, you know, I think they are going towards the neutral. So as we might be going to a society which is much more neutral, and which has other relationships, and which is not a sort of Primitive, sort of, uh, a sort of male and female archetype, you know, attraction. So it, that is very interesting. And also, what was so interesting is that I then, you know, stupid, I thought, okay, fluidity is important, so maybe also fashion is becoming fluid. And then, not at all. Fashion is actually. Good getting more, you know, sturdy and strong. And uh, also, icon fashion, this icon, this icon. So fashion is not changing. And suddenly I understood that maybe, because of fluidity, fashion needs to be stable. That actually, if everything is fluid, maybe one thing needs to be grounded. And so, 
that might be the reason why fashion is all the time the same. So that was a great discovery. And I'm working now on um, new colors. And um, I do everything about knitwear, <laughs> you know, sweaters. And, because we have not talked about knitwear for 25 years, long time. Creative, creative knit. And so I think because of the situation with the war, and all the problems with uh, economy, recession, and so we will need warmth. So I'm voting for a very simple <laughs> recipe. And um, for my fashion, I'm uh, exploring the idea of hibernation, which is animals when they mm -hmm. go yes, into go to sleep. sleep. But there's many, many types of hibernation. I made a study, it's very fascinating. There is uh, some animals, they go into torpor. Like, mm. you know, they become stiff. So that would be very interesting, stiff fabrics and stiff, I don't know. Other ones become cocoon. Other ones become uh, sort of insects. They become sort of like cloud in the trees. Um, there's another insect, um, I think it's an insect, that is um, shivering like, <laughs> against the cold. Now I try to imagine shivering fashion. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but you know, I'm trying, I'm going to try to give recipes to don't, not use so much energy by being very slow. If the more you slow, the less energy you use. Being together, so you warm together. You have many. <clears throat> That's another recipe. Migrating for the seasonal migration is another very nice recipe. So there's very many recipes to, um, to live the winter in a new way. So this is my new study <laughs> about hibernation. And uh, for the knitwear, I called it, uh, it's, uh, it's the way you put babies in the, in the blanket, swaddling. And so, you, so the baby cannot move, you know. And um, I think we need to make things which are swaddling because we feel so alone, we have been so pain, we are so stressed, it's so scary. And uh, then I, I look for babies <laughs> swaddling, and it's so cute, so cute. So the baby is just a little head, and then you have the cocon. <laughs> so that is already like a whole new fashion, you know, <laughs> like swaddling fashion. So yeah, I'm very excited about. <laughs> I'm very excited about the crisis <laughs> because it can give us. Um, many ideas and help again to reset the clock. No. <laughs> 어떻게 보면 레코드가 이제 패션이 아니라 무슨 교육 아까 말씀하시는 거 들으니까 교육 브랜드가 될 수도 있겠다. 아, 뭐 단지 이제 어떤 옷을 만드는 일뿐만이 아니라 이런 생각이 들기도 했어요. 그래서 전무님이 생각하시는 레코드의 미래? 어, 제가 10년 전에 레코드라는 브랜드를 만들 때 어떠한 것을 정의하지는 않았어요. 어, 이런 패션을 오랫동안 저도 했고 어, 모두도 답은 갖고 있어요. 근데 제가 시작하는 레코드라는 부분은 지금도 저는 미래에 대한 어떤 답을 아직은 내려가지 않아요. 음, 이번 전시에도 어, 우리가 함께해서 조금 더 많은 사람들과 환경에 대한 생각, 사회적 리스폰스빌리티에 대한 생각을 바꿔가고 이것들이 하나하나씩 그 사회를, 환경을 바꿔갈 수 있다고 하면 그리고 지금 제가 좀 많이 생각하고 있는 거는 옷을 입는 행위 자체에서도 물론 옷을 입고 행복하고 
또 이뻐 보이고 하는 것도 중요하지만 이런 행동에서 우리가 무언가 환경을 위해서 사회를 위해서 할수 있다고 하면 저는 그렇게 해야 된다고 생각을 해요. 그리고 앞으로 그거는 레코드가 지금껏 해왔고 앞으로도 계속적으로 해가야 되는 생각이라고 생각을 해요. 그래서 어, 저는 지금 음, 브랜드 액티비즘에 대한 생각을 많이 하고 있고 음, 브랜드가 단순히 옷을 입는 거로만 그 고객과의 커뮤니케이션이 끝나는 게 아니고 연기열대연시는 선에서 레코드의 미래는 계속적으로 만들어질 것 같아요.